Hey everyone, uh, we got some more um, updates here about the Crowley case and I'm just going to read some of these things here and then um, discuss it a little bit. Um, we'll see where this goes. This, this is regarding some of the data requests that we have put in regarding the David Crowley case and still still some more questions even with this, right? We still There's still some questions about the public data and obviously we feel uh, the public everybody in the public should all get the same data and so that's what we kind of contacted uh, the AVPD and uh, September 20th 2021 which would be yesterday got a response from Christine J Caselius and she is the Apple Valley City Attorney so this is um, uh, this is very important here um, and I'm just going to read some of this stuff, but hope everybody is doing good and another day here on Rumble Of course, we're going to uh, always try to put the newest latest stuff here on Rumble first. So appreciate everybody joining me here and um, Then it will be uploaded to YouTube and to the Grace Stage podcast probably as a bonus show most likely so uh, But hope everyone's doing good. It's a beautiful day here and no complaints on my end as I sip this nice little white wine that we have here that will accompany us here. Um, so this was sent to me yesterday, as we said. This is in regards to the recent requests for data in the Crowley investigation. Now the attorneys are at, actually at the top here too. So it's uh, Doherty Molina attorneys. Doherty Molina, Sofest, Hills, and Bauer, PA. So pretty official and um, once again I found the whole thing we are gonna read this here I found the whole thing to be very pr professional and respectful it's just about all of my dealings with the Apple Valley Police Department the BCA and anyone else any other law enforcement um, that has been involved in this I found all of them to be very respectful um, truthful and willing to admit their mistakes when they do make them. So I do appreciate that. So go ahead and read a little bit here. Dear David, dear Crowley data requester, here's what she writes. In 2015, the Apple Valley Police Department, ABPD, assembled a packet of public data once the ABPD determined there was no one to charge at that time. The public data included the police reports, investigator observations, and photos of the scene, all which all data which had been created by the investigating team. Release of this data complied with Minnesota Statute 13.82, sub 7. The AVPD released data to a variety of requesters, including appropriate family members of the decedents. In January slash February 2021, the AVPD responded to a request for a few very specific photographs. So I don't know if they're talking about some of the stuff that we have requested or um, maybe it was, maybe it was because they're talking to me, I'm, I'm assuming, right? <laughs> so, but they're not very specific in that and we can follow up on that. There's lots of stuff we can follow up with them on. It goes on, the AVPD received additional data requests between the dates July 26, 2021 through September 6, 2021. Uh, from a total of four requesters, all of whom have previously received the aforementioned data from the AVPD. These requests included the digital reports of data the AVPD extracted from the decedent's private electronic devices. Data on individuals' private electronic devices is protected by Article 1, Amendment 10 of the Minnesota State Constitution. The right of the people to be secure, quote, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. Also see State versus Barajas, 817-NW-2-204-215-216, Minnesota CT, APP, 2012, REV-Denied. Um, 
the AVPD was required to obtain a search warrant before examining the family's electronic devices. We will make sure that you can um, read this whole thing fully. And if you have any thoughts, any comments on that, please feel free to go ahead and add those too. Uh, it goes on. The Constitution protected the Crowley's personal electronic data from collection by the ABPD while the Crowley's were alive, thus their personal electronic data would have been classified as private while they were alive. I mean, we're talking about dead people here, but I'm, they're very thorough. So, remember, they're lawyers. I'm not, so they know what they're talking about. I'm just trying to understand what they're saying here. The AVPD will not be releasing any data from the decedent's devices because it is private data on decedents. So even though you know, they say it's private data while they are uh, live, it still sounds like, based on those cases, it's still private data even though they're no longer with us. She goes on to say, We are reviewing the remainder of the recent requests to determine whether there is any additional data the AVPD can release. So that's good. So we've, you know, they told us that this would take time, the data that we've asked for, et cetera, et cetera, would take time. Um, so they're still looking at what they can release, if there's any additional data that they can release, which should be the stuff that Tony Floyd got, the stuff that Tony Floyd posted. That stuff should be part of the data that we should be able to get if other people have it and it's all public stuff. If it was released to the public legally, then obviously we should we should have access to it too. If it's not released, if it wasn't released legally, that's a whole nother legal issue that um, this lawyer, this attorney, and uh, the Apple Valley City attorney may want to think about. Goes on, also a document entitled Examination Report, which was allegedly written by AVPD Detective Shane Klaconis was provided to the AVPD by one of the recent requesters. Thank you for bringing this absolutely false document to our attention. I'm gonna read that again. Thank you for bringing this absolutely false document to our attention. In close, please find an affidavit by Detective Klaconis affirming this is a fraudulent document. Yours, very truly yours, Christine J. Caselius. So we will be following up with her uh, the AVPD was also CC'd on that as well, but, um, so I was like, okay, what, what are they talking about? Okay, the examination report, remember, that's the five-page report that we have on our website, um, on the Gray Stage website. It's the same one that Tony Floyd, um, also posted, and I didn't notice a difference looking at it again, um, and it was pointed out to me to look at it a second time. And the one that is on Tony Floyd's website is different than the one that we got from the Apple Valley Police. So this is the five page one here now. Um, let me just go to my website so I can, if anyone wants to quickly find it um, and kind of look at it. But this is where it gets a little interesting here. So I'll go to my website, take a look at that. but. This is what was confusing to me. So I'm glad they're still looking into it. So that's great, data requests, all that. It sounds like um, anything that is from their phone, you know, like the actual text messages, things like that. It sounds like we won't be getting that. Anything that is from their devices, the actual stuff, even though they've got the day one journal. So they were, that was from the device, I believe, but because David even said he's doing this all from his phone. So we were able to get that one, but apparently, not any of this other stuff that's on there, which is also kind of curious, but okay, whatever. I mean, we, we know that there's nothing on these devices that helps prove their case. They've made that very clear, so it's not the biggest deal that we do or that we don't get it, um, except for some of the questions about calls that people said that were made and then calls that um, cannot be verified that were made. So it's things like that, that kind of, um, that's, you know, that's the reason to get some of the data. So even if it's just timestamps or just, you know, um, some of this stuff that will help us get a better idea of, okay, well, like you have, you know, Klein or um, you have Chris Peck who said, you know, there's this call was, was made and then, um, then we have what the phone records that we have show that that call was never made, things like that. You know, David Crowley's father, same, same thing. Um, and so that's the type of stuff that, you know, it, it's the clarification on it to say, okay, well, yeah, um, 
you know, if the police never followed up on it to see if that was actually true, maybe they should have, you know, maybe that would help this, their investigation or their, I guess, I don't want to call it lack of investigation, but I can't think of a better word for it. Anyways, um, but that's the reason why we've been trying to get a lot of these documents. Um, the Day One Journal just happened to be kind of one of the things that they gave to us that is from his electronic de device. And I don't know, but now we're told that we're not allowed to get that. So I don't understand that because we have it. They gave it to us. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so the search history, things like that are good. You know, and that's all that that's all that I would really want to look for at this point when they've already proven that, you know, there's nothing that they found in this to help prove their case. So they made that very clear. Um, so anyways, if you go to my website, it's one, two, three, four. It's the fourth one down. It's titled Examination Report, Dakota County Sheriff's Office Electronic Crime Unit. And so when you open that up, you'll see it's a five-page document. Look at the very first page. And right under the big box where it says examination report to and then reported report prepared by um, so it's like well here is a document this is a five page thing that if this is fraudulent where'd you guys get this from so we are gonna have to kind of follow up on on that because um, this was given to us by the ABPD that's why I was a little confused like wait a minute so who made this did it a superior make this or somebody else made this if detective Klaconos said he didn't make this then why is it here <laughs> why is it part of all of this so that was very confusing in the beginning there but um and we'll kind of read through some of that here too but that was the big question and then it was pointed out to me that if you go to tony floyd's website and you look at the same five page document um there's an extra paragraph in there so i'm going to open up that so um, the affidavit, we do have the affidavit by Detective Shane Kokonis. I'll read a little bit from that. Shane Kokonis, being duly sworn on oath, states and deposes as following. So this is an affidavit from him. I am MN Post licensed peace officer and have been employed by the Apple Valley, Minnesota Police Department since 2004. I have been a member of the Dakota County Electronics Crime Scene Task Force since it was created in early 2015, so it's pretty new there. Um, in 2014-2015, I participated in investigating the deaths of three persons whose bodies were found in a single-family residence at 1051 Ramsdale Drive in the city of Apple Valley. My investigative responsibilities consisted of forensic examinations of digital evidence. I'm going to pause for a second here. Let that go by. If it will, hopefully it will. Or else I may have to move to a quieter location, which may not be a bad idea. <laughs> okay, so then it goes on. Um, I have reviewed the attached document entitled Examination Report, placed upon alleged letterhead dated October 5th, 2015, and states that I prepared the report. Prior to seeing this document during August 2021, I had never seen this document. I am absolutely not the creator of that document. Further, I have reviewed the applicable case file uh, 1500303 maintained by the Apple Valley Police Department and I did not locate this document. But again, this was one of the documents that, uh, that they gave to us. So go back and verify that one too but then it goes on prior to seeing this document during august 2021 i had never seen this document i am absolutely not the creator of that document further i have reviewed the applicable case file okay and he says and i do not locate this document so further your offendant saith not dated the 20th of september so that i mean the same day they had him sign this and include this in what they sent to us the exact same day and he signs it right there um, with the notary and then so this is a two-page thing here um, no I don't know how bad that is in the background or not if you guys it's pretty bad I apologize for that um, so then what you see here is 
you look at page number two and it looks almost exactly like what we have here. There are some differences though. And so I see what, what he's saying here because they've only given him, so he's only talking about this one page. It looks very similar to the five page document that we have, but it is a little bit different. And so you'll be able to compare those two documents to kind of see how different it really is. Um, so in the fraudulent one, you know, it has the header, the letterhead, everything like that. Dakota County Sheriff's Office, Electronic Crime Unit, like examination report. That all looks right. That all looks good. Uh, this is what happens when you record live, folks, <laughs> out in public. I mean, um, yeah, it's just apologize for that again, but kind of just got to roll with it here. Um, and it says, to Detective Tommy Booth and Brian Bone, Apple Valley Police Department. That's the fraudulent one. You look at the real one. To Detective Tommy Booth and Brian Bone, um, Apple Valley Police Department. I mean, it looks very, very, very same, very much the same. Um, I guess, you know, even the report prepared by Detective Shane Coconis, Dakota County ECU, it's got the address of them regarding the incident. So all of that stuff in the, in the top paragraph there looks legit it looks the same it lo all looks kind of the same there um so hastings minnesota yeah i mean all of that right there but he says he didn't do this so when he says he didn't re re create this document i don't it's hard to believe he's talking about this five page document here he may just be talking about the one that is in the pdf the affidavit pdf which is just one page there's just one page here and um i will try to read the fake one I'll try to read the fake one here if I can. And this is, it says, not for public release, right? That's how it starts at the top. You look at the one, the real one that they sent us, the five-pager, and it starts on January 17th, 2015. Two completely separate things, two different things here. So, I believe I am going to, um, I apologize for this. I'm just going to, okay, maybe they're going to stop that. Let's see. If they don't stop, I'm going to take a little move around here somewhere. Okay, we'll give it one more shot. If it doesn't work, then I will move into my garage and we'll continue on. Um, yeah, so fake document, not for public release, and it starts, Tommy, attached is the full examination report regarding 1051 Ramsdale Drive, Crowley family, it's very hard to read. Um, all, as you can tell from the photo and the journal entries, there was widespread yeah, it's really hard to read. Um, and drug use by the perpetrator. But not slept in many days. So this is all fraudulent here. And I know it's really hard to read. Maybe we can get um, a better copy or whoever, whoever got this, whoever obtained this, wherever this came from. Um, maybe we can get some more. But th he's like, I didn't write this. Somebody fraudulent. This, somebody forge this document here this is not an active document the top head the letterhead the top part is all le legit but when it starts with tommy and then it's talking about widespread you know use of drugs uh illegal drugs um had not slept in many days from the evidence we were able to obtain we believe he was substance awake and the journal entries show him becoming increasingly agitated somebody wrote this this is not... Somebody forged a police document here. Um, why? Why would somebody do that? So you have to ask yourself, what would motivate someone to actually do that? You know, how bad do some people really want David Crowley to be guilty that they're willing to fake documents, police documents? This is a big deal here. This is criminal stuff. Whoever did this needs to be punished for this for sure why would you do this so now it makes sense because i'm reading this for maybe the second time um i i i am having a hard time reading exactly what is written here um we'll, i'll try to get a better transcript for you and maybe we can get a more a copy that has um 
that is not so blurred. It's just, I'm sorry, the one in the affidavit is very blurry. So I'm glad they they saw it, but it's really hard for me. It looks like they may, may have just scanned it and added it to this. So um, this, this is a big deal. So let me see if I can read anything else. We, we believe the actual incident occurred at either December 24th or December 25th, and that substances as well as sleep deprivation contributed. Shane Kokonis didn't say any of this. He's not saying that. He's not saying that. It's, it's the same cast of characters saying this. Who faked this document and why? Why would you fake this document? This is a huge, huge deal here. Someone is desperate, very desperate, in order to go this far, forge a police document just because you have no evidence that David Crowley is guilty? Why would you do that? You know? What is the motivation for that? Um, so I hope the police do follow up on this, and we are going to try to um, see if, if, if they need help following up on this, um, where this came from. Um, in the coming days, we'll have more information about that, about who created this document, where did this come from. And actually, um, I think it's on Tony Floyd's website, so we can kind of take a look at that there. Um, Again, we're all live, or not live, we're not live, we're live to tape is what they call it here. There will be no edits in this one, um, just for time's sake and everything. But it, I just felt this was really important to kind of get out there. Uh, let's see, where can I go? I mean, this is, this is really crazy. Why would somebody do this? Why would you add all this? And you can see what they're talking about here. It's all this stuff that kind of contributes to David's death. How many people have they shared this with? and try to fool, try to fool people. Why would you do that? You know, if you really cared about this case, if you really cared about getting to the, to the truth, if you cared about the facts, you wouldn't do that. You would not create something like this. This is ridiculous. I mean, they, they basically, whoever created this in Shane Klokonos' name, um, why would it not be for public release? I mean, there's so many weird questions about that, but I will try to get the, the transcript of this um, paragraph and add this into the description. I just have not had the time to really do that. Just with a lot, a lot of other things going on, I just have not had the time. But I felt that this was very important to kind of get out. So let me see if I can. So sleep deprivation concluded or uh, contributed. As I discussed, our evidence coupled with DCA with BCA's co-investigation cornered with your findings. Who used the word cornered? that the adult female was shot first, was shot first and from a short distance. Um, the minor child was then shot at close range and placed near the adult female. And at some point the male perpetrator uh, took the gun on, or took the weapon on himself and then discharged it, causing his subsequent death. I mean, Shane Kokonis is saying, I didn't say any of this. And you, I mean, this, this, uh, this is the first time I'm reading this here, folks. Um, this is troublesome. This is very troublesome. But it shows the, the length that some people will try to, to go to in order to just trick you, to trick people. It's not about getting to the truth. You know, we are the ones getting to the truth here. Um, this is how we do it. This is how we do it here. Um, we just look at the documents, we post them, people, we crowdsource the documents. From what my friend Ross is saying, it's pretty much what we're doing, just crowdsourcing all this stuff here so everybody can have it. And hey, do your own research, do your own investigation. We'd love to have you a part of, of what we're doing here too, but don't feel like you know you have to just do whatever we're, we're doing or even have to agree with us you know you, you can hate us you can you cannot like me you can be one of the pe people that i've blocked it does not matter to me you have the documents the documents are not blocked <laughs> so you always will have access to any of that stuff if you go to my to my website it's 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 all there so um but that's how you do it creating a fake document is not how you do it that just exposes yourself that really shows who you are, what your motivation is, and that you're full of garbage, you're full of crap. So, um, this is interesting. I did not send the, uh, 
the lawyer this. I did not send this to them. This is the first time that I'm reading this. Now, I probably had skimmed through this on Tony's website. We, I need to go to Tony's website. We need to read more about um, where this came from. And, of course, I can't remember what his website is. I think it's like Strange Investigation. No, that's, that's William Rail. Um, I'm going to have to go to my YouTube channel and try to pull that up. Um, but that's all that is on the fake document. So we, we will be closing our case file to reflect the same. Please let me know if we care to be of any further assistance. And then it just ends with Shane. I mean, it's it's really weird, Tommy and Shane. And But he's Shane Coconus is saying he didn't write this. Who wrote this then? The date is October 5th, 2015. It's, it's a, the same letterhead. It's, they use the exact same letterhead to try to trick people. Is that what it's really come to? Because people are so desperate to want to believe David Crowley is guilty that they resort to these games? And we know the cast of characters that have been caught doing this, that are still doing this, right? It's nothing nothing new, but it's just like, you just keep doing it. You just keep going to exposing yourself. And now you may have some, some um, now you may have some legal issues. Big legal issues. But um, whoever did this, you know, whoever did send it in to them, thank you for that. Um, and uh, now let's let's track it. Now let's see where the, where the source. What is the source of this information? This false information here. Uh, okay, so let me see if I can go there. Back to my channel. I gotta find what um, Tony's channel is. Then we'll kind of go to there. Nothing like a little white wine on a hot summer day. All right, so where's okay? Ballad of Tony Floyd. Then I'm gonna go. Okay, CrowleyFamilyDeaths.NeoCities.com.org. CrowleyFamilyDeaths.NeoCities.org. So let's look at that. Where is that image? Because that image came from here. Okay, here it is. <clears throat> and that's the spreadsheet. Okay, electronics report. So it's a little ways down. And they have the... Okay, this one I can read a lot better from his website. Let me see if I can reread that. Okay, from Tommy to Shane. Is this one going to... Oh, even better. Okay, here we go. So here is the falsified document. This is not a legit document. And then we're going to see what Tony says about where he got this from, where this came from. This is not for public release. Tommy, comma. Attached is the full examination report regarding 1051 Ramsdale Drive slash Crowley family. As you can tell from the photos and journal entries, there was widespread drug use to include a plethora of illicit drugs. And the perpetrator, David Crowley, has not slept in many days. None of that is true. From the evidence we were able to obtain, we believe that he was using substances to remain awake, and the journal entries show him becoming increasingly agitated. Really. Although we cannot say with 100% certainty what set the wheels in motion. We believe the actual incident occurred on either December 24, 2014 or December 25, 2014, and that the substances, as well as sleep deprivation, contributed. The police have never said any of this stuff, really. Um, they just say he snapped, right? And that's only what, one or two cops who say that one. So, um, so interesting. Um, Okay. As discussed, our evidence coupled with BCA's co-investigation concur with your findings that the adult female was shot first from a short distance. The minor child was then shot at close range and placed near the adult female. And at some point later, the male perpetrator turned the weapon on himself and discharged it, causing his subsequent death. We will be closing our case file to reflect the same. This is October 5th again. 
please let us know if we can be of any further assistance. I mean, all lies, all just blatant lies, none of that. It, whoever created that is in some serious trouble, and whoever created that, shame on you. Shame on you for that, for making this false document, trying to use the police headline, the header for it, and um, thanks to the police for calling them out on it, too. Maybe we'll see what other documents the police want to call people out on, too, next. So, look for that in the future. Let's see what Tony says about this one. Okay, this page was obtained through Joe Tommaso at the Crowley case dash fact versus fiction. As you can see, it clearly reads not for public release and was redacted from the copy of the full report that I have provided below, which was obtained via a records request. Okay, so that's the same one that we have too, the five pager. And he says, this is more evidence of shady, less than legal methods to obtain materials. And he's right. Not only is it shady and less than legal methods to obtain materials, they created a material. So if this was really obtained through Joe Tomato, Joe Tommaso, then he created this fake document. Something needs to happen to him for that, legally. I hope the police follow up on that. I hope the investigators follow up on that, and I hope whoever has to drill back here um, will follow up on that. <laughs> and there it is. There it is. I'll let the drillers drill for a second. You know, we've been drilling for information for such a long time. With everybody's drilling for something, right? And um, wow. I did not expect that, you know. So thank you again to whoever sent that to the Apple Valley Police to let them know that there was a, a fraudulent document out there. And it does make me wonder if there are any other fraudulent documents out there that the police are not aware of. And if there are, whoever you are, please get that to them too. And, um, you know, it's not surprising to me that it is Joe Tomato. Not surprising at all. Not at all. Um... So, according to what Tony says here, if he obtained it through Joe Tomato, Joe Tomato has got some rotten tomatoes that he needs to, uh, needs to clean up. Clean up your act, you know. Stop tricking people. Stop trying to fool people. Stop trying to get them. Sincere people. Sincere people, you know. It, why? Why would you do this? Why would you create this? Why would you put this on on this fake group, on this phony group? This is why nobody takes them seriously. It's all fiction and no fact. I mean, that's pretty pretty clear to me from the little that I've seen that people have sent to me. You know, it's pretty clear. I have all them blocked, so I don't look at this fake group or anything like that. But here it is, you know, and, and this is not the first time that I've been sent, um, or I've looked at some things that people have, other people have sent to me, and it's like, man, do you know what these guys are doing? You know, you know, they're slandering and this and that, and it's like, man, let them do what they want, you know, but, um, it's a, it's a, it's a free country. Everybody has the, the right to say whatever they want about me or do whatever they want, you know, but, um, when you start doing something criminal, when you start to create false documents, you are the fiction here. And again, we know that because we got the facts. So the facts are on our side. Um, so the only real group that you really need to be concerned about is the Justice for David Crowley and Family Facebook group. That's the only real group that's out there um, that is focused on this case, focused on getting justice for this family, not lying to people and playing games like you see here on Tony's website where he calls all these people out for different things, for different reasons. So it's not surprising to me that Joe Tomato would have this and would try to spread this fake document. Um, and there's there's no need for it. There's no need for it. If he really believes David Crowley is guilty, there's no need to spread any of this fake documents. Just show people um, what proves David Crowley guilty and that should be it. You know, we've pretty much done the same thing. We're going to show you what proves him not guilty and we're going to talk about it. That's what real people should be doing. That's what common sense people should be doing. That's what we do. That's what we have done. That's what we have continued to do and what we will continue to do. Until we can get the case reopened at least. Um, let's just run to that. Hmm. 
So again, <laughs> it's just, it's so ridiculous. I mean, the desperation, the desperation and clinging to this false stuff, all these false reports, false documents, um, instead of just examining what the truth is. So um, I guess thanks to, to Tony, I don't know if Tony is the one that reached out to them and let them know about it, but whoever did, you know, thank you for that. And if there's any other false documents that this fake group is putting out there, or anyone is putting out there, make sure that you report that to the police. They need to know that. Um, it does not help their case. It does not help the family. This hurts the family. Creating fake documents like this hurts the family. It, it disrespects the family. It disrespects the real friends of David Crowley. It disrespects David Crowley. It should not be done. It does not need to be done. There's no reason for it to be done unless you know David Crowley is innocent and you just want to trick people. And that's what's going on here. That's exactly what is going on here. Here is more proof here. So that's why I don't waste my time with trolls, with anything like that. Hey, you guys have freedom of speech. You want to say whatever you want. You want to slander me. It doesn't matter. It's freedom. You have the freedom to do that. Um, but, you know, <laughs> this is what happened. This is how God works. You get caught. So just be honest. Be sincere. You know, do the right thing. And um, that's it. That's it. And you won't, you won't run into these problems. And this guy is not someone who is new to any problems either. So he's got tons of problems. Don't, don't we all, right? But, I mean, this is just taken to another level. This is taken to a retarded level. This is just very, very dumb. And you have to account for that. You will have to account for that. So we'll see what the police do. You may get a knock on your door one day saying, Hey, we'd like to talk to you about something here. Don't be surprised. So, look out your window. They may hear that knock coming. You never know. <laughs> it won't be me. It'll be the police, if anything. Um, okay. Okay. Let's quickly... Okay, um, I guess I can read, <clears throat> clear my throat a little bit, but I guess I can read the actual, the real one. It's five pages. So I don't know if you all want to sit here through that. I'm tired of my voice yet here. But uh, I'll take one more sip of wine and then I'll um, kind of read through this. This is the real one here. This is the five pager. Same one that Tony has. So, but Joe Tomato apparently gave um, Tony that fake one. Why? I mean, why? So. Thanks again, Tony. <laughs> Tony's helping us more. Keeps helping us. It really, I mean, he's and he doesn't believe David Crowley is innocent either. He thinks that David Crowley is guilty, but it, it just shows that you know we can we can work with with people. We be respectful, decent human beings. You know, I don't have time for trolls. I don't have time for games. I don't have time for retards. I don't have time for idiots. So you know, and that's it. Um, we can read through some of this stuff here. It's only a few pages. As long as my battery on my phone doesn't die, we're good to go. But support your local winery, too. Okay. On January 17th, and this this is the real one from Shane Klaconos. This is a five-page one. I'm just We're just going to make sure to verify that this is really from him. I believe it is. I don't think we have to worry about anything like that. I think this is this. I mean, it, the fact that it's the same date, it's the exact same header, and all this at the very top. So make sure you go to my website and check that out. And, um, I'll try to post the link to the actual five page document, the real one. And then I'll post um, the link to um, to Tony's website where you can scroll down a little bit and you'll, you will see this same photo, or the same header, but it's different. That's what threw me off. I didn't even, it's just, I thought the same header, it must be the same thing, but it's not. Okay, here's what it says. Um, this is to Detective Tommy Booth and Brian Bone. This is a report, paired, re, a report prepared by Detective Shane Klokonis. 
On January 17, 2015, this detective, along with detectives Tommy Thomas Jacobson and Ryan Olson from the Dakota County Electronic Crime Unit, ECU, assisted the Apple Valley Police Department with the search warrant at 1051 Ramsdale Drive in the city of Apple Valley. This search warrant was the result of multiple deceased bodies being found in the residence. The Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension was also present and processed the scene for physical evidence. Many electronic devices were taken as evidence from the residence. Those items are listed below. And an iMac computer was located in an office type room on the southeast side of the house. This computer was powered on and had several external hard drives connected to it. The power cord was removed from the rear of the computer without shutting it down. A MacBook Pro was located in the kitchen. This device was found to be powered on and active. After the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension had completed processing it for physical evidence, I turned the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth off. There was a text document on the desktop of this device titled Myth and that had the words, I have loved you all with all of my heart. Later examination of this device showed this text document had last been saved on December 14, 2014 at 4.10 p.m. But an autosave version of this document, the open document, had been last saved on December 25, 2014 at 1.18 p.m. Testing on a different Apple MacBook found that the text documents created, then saved and opened at a later time and had changes made to the document, will be autosaved after 60 seconds of inactivity. Photographs of the above described were taken and added to this report. This computer was kept in its awake state and transported to the ECU by Detective Olson for forensic examination. So it was created on December 14th, and then there was an autosave um, that happened on the last autosave was on December 25th, 2014. So it really makes no sense. De December 14th, I mean, you look at what happened. Um, December 14th is a pretty important date, but we know that everybody's still alive. There's nothing really crazy on December 14th. David and Kamel, uh, Rania's still in, in school. David and Kamel go and meet Chris Klein, or Chris Peck, sorry, um, a few days later. Um, when David and Kamel pick up Rania for the last day of school, the police or the uh, the school says they don't notice anything weird or anything strange. They were kind of normal, so everything here looks kind of normal there. I mean, it doesn't look like there's anything um, odd. So there's no way if this was created had last been saved on December 14th, last saved on December 14th, it's not a suicide note. It's more evidence that this is not a suicide note that was um, the, the typed up note. Um, it also kind of shows that maybe this was David that actually wrote that. I mean, that would be the best evidence that David wrote it because it was written on December 14th, right, that he wrote that. It doesn't make it a, um, a typed, or sorry, it doesn't make it a suicide note and because it was last saved on December 25th, 2014, it looks like somebody reopened it and purposely set it on the computer open in an open text box, staging the crime scene once again. That's something that apparently, from what I'm reading here, it looks like that stood out to the police because it was, or, or to the uh, to the investigators, to remember, to the people that were able to look at the electronic documentation and when it was last saved so this is what they do here so that makes it stage right and it doesn't look like there was it's an auto save so it's not like there was anything changed and it was titled myth um, that's why you can clearly see there's nothing that would show that this would be anything related to a suicide note or anything or David going crazy any of that stuff I mean I think that's very clear but I do believe that this is the best evidence that shows David Crowley did write that on December 14th but still <laughs> okay um, let's see here. Where was 
was I? Okay. MacBook Photos. Okay, MacBook Photos, Detective Tommy Booth with the Apple Valley Police Department submitted an examination request for digital evidence gather at 1051 Ramsdale Drive. The examination request was pursuant to a search warrant. Detective Booth provided the Dakota County ECU with a copy of the examination request form and search warrant. Use the following links to view the search warrant and examination request, which I, I do believe we have. We have the search warrant. The examination request form not sure about that but good to follow up on that so um, we're now on page two by the way if you're following along if you're reading along with this uh, and again the title of that document on my website is electronic crimes examination so make sure that you go and you can check that out um, examination report Dakota County electronic crime unit and then it has an item number Item one, the dis description. So item one is a black I Apple iPhone. Um, you know, item two is a AT&T micro SIM card from the iPhone. Item three is a white Apple iPhone. Um, item four is the AT&T nano SIM card. So there's a SIM card that was there, but when, and um, the white one is, is most likely Kamel's, but when uh, when I talked with Kamel's sister, she said that when they got the iPhone back, it didn't have the SIM card in it. That's what she told me. That's what she first told me. <laughs> uh, item 5, then, is a Apple MacBook Pro. And then 6 is a 16 gigabit, 16 gig blue USB drive. Item 7 is an Apple iMac computer uh, with a keyboard and mouse. Item 8, Western Digital, 640 gig hard drive, external hard drive, that was in item 7. Um, item 9, Western Digital, My Book Studio, external hard drive. Well, so lots of external hard drives that they took here, and we, we've covered that, but this just gives us a little more detail about those external hard drives. And they're, they're labeled differently here. You can see they're, they're itemized here, but um, it has all of those. The Kindle Fire that you see on the kitchen um, island is there. The Camel Surface Pro, which is item 15, so that is their 128 gig Microsoft Surface Pro. Um, more external hard drives. Item 17 is a password list, GS slash GSTR password list with a yellow post-it note. So that's pretty interesting because, um, you know, obviously, well, who could who could get into that? anybody with the password list? He's got a written password list here. Anyone could get into that, to this stuff. Um, 18 is a another hard drive 19 is another hard drive these are big hard drive 20 is another password list so there's two password lists here that are mentioned uh, 21 is another external hard drive with the words iron enema on it 22 is a SD card reader SD card readers 22 23 is a 16 gig SanDisk compact uh, flash card mounted inside item 22 so it's mounted inside of the Lexar SD card reader 24 is miscellaneous power cores they took the power cores for some reason well I guess to power keep powered in or whatever 25 Sima mini um, another SD card reader 26 is a SD adapter inside of 25 27 is a 64 gig um, SD card inside of item 26, so 25, 26, 27, all related. 28, a Toshiba 500 gig external hard drive with quote unquote family pictures on the case. Um, 29 is a USB 2 card reader. 30 is another external hard drive. 31 is a USB thumb drive. 32 is another USB thumb drive. 33, a Western Digital 3 terabyte external internal hard drive uh, interesting 34 is another internal hard drive doesn't say where they're internal from but okay uh, 35 black pelican case with the words hothead production on it and Heil written on the outside containing six three terabyte external hard drives I mean this is massive stuff backing up, backing up, lots of digital data. They went through all of that stuff, didn't find anything, nothing, that would help them understand why David Crowley would be guilty. Nothing. Okay, um, we're now at the bottom of page three.
pre-examination procedures were collected, including documenting and photographing the items, the iMac photos, the scene photos, and the miscellaneous photos. Cellular phone forensic software slash hardware from Cellebrite was used to extract data from item one, the iPhone. When conducting the extraction, precautions were taken to make sure the device was not allowed to connect to the network. Specifically, a cellular disruption device was powered on prior to the phone being powered on. This prevented the phone from connecting to the cellular network. Once powered on, the phone was placed in airplane mode. The cellular disruption device was then powered off and the data was extracted. The extraction was conducted with item 01, iPhone, containing item 02, the nano SIM card. Nano SIM card. Data extracted including phone book, SMS, MMS, email, IM, calendar, apps, apps data, pictures, auto music, videos, ringtones, call logs, and browsing data. Let's go to page four. Data from the application titled quote unquote day one was found. Some of the actual entries were still on the phone. These journal entries were exported into a readable form. This device appears to have been owned and used by Mr. Crowley. The text messages found on the device and day one entries indicated illegal drug use by the Crowleys. This information was forwarded to detectives at the Apple Valley Police Department for further follow-up. When they say illegal drug use, they're talking about weed, probably shrooms. Uh, I think shrooms too. I think, I think he mentioned shrooms, I'm not sure. Um, but we know that he does talk about using shrooms once, I think. That was it. Tried it, compared it to weed, which is weird, but, um, and that was really it. So, Mr. Crowley also indicated in his journaling he would stay up for many hours screenwriting for a movie he was working on. A review of the timeline on this device showed it was last used on 12-25-2014. Use the following links to view the Celebrate Report. So, they have the Celebrate Reports in HTML, PDF, and UFDR formats. Um, the Celebrate Logical, Celebrate File System, the Day One Spreadsheet, Day One PDF Exports, and the Day One Zip Exports. So we'll see what we can get from that. Item 3, an Apple iPhone S 5S, was found to be locked with a four-digit code that was not known, and no data was able to be extracted from this device. So they couldn't get anything from Item 3, which was Kamel's phone, which is what... Um, uh, Kamel's sister said they couldn't get anything from it. So that's act that's con consistent with what she was saying there too. Even though I think later on she said that they were able to get, um, her dad told her that they were able to get data from it. If I remember correctly, it could be wrong. Uh, item 5 and item 7, which were found to be the main devices used by David Crowley. And again, item 5 is, item 5 is the Apple, uh, the MacBook Pro, and 7 is the MacBook so item 5 is the MacBook Pro that was found in the kitchen. Item 7 is the iMac computer that was found in David's office room. So um, looking at those, item 5 and item 7, which were found to be the main devices used by David Crowley, the hard drive contained within item 7, which is item 8, was removed from item 7 by Detective Jacobson. These items were examined by Detective Vaughn. See the following links for the reports pertaining to items 5 and 8. So item five, the black light report, item eight, the black light report, and detective on narrative, which we do have on the website. So you should have access to all of those as well. Item nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13 were external hard drives connected to item seven. These drives, um, and so that they were all connected to, the, uh, to David's computer in the office bedroom. Um, these drives were in a RAID configuration specific to item 07. Because of the RAID configuration, an individual forensic image of each device could not be achieved. It was determined the drives could be connected to item 7 as they were discovered in the Crowley home on January 17, 2015 to preview the contents. This computer and hard drives contain data relating to movie production and editing. Nothing further was done with these items. Forensic software slash hardware from Celebrite was used to extract the data contained within item 14. No information relating to the deaths of the Crowley family was found on this item. So again, item 14 is, uh, that's 
uh, the Kindle Fire. Okay, so nothing in the Kindle Fire. Um, and let's go last last page here. Page five. The contents of items six, fifteen, and eighteen were examined by creating a forensic image of the data contained within them using Access Data FTK Imager. Item fifteen was found to be locked. This is Camille's um, uh, Surface Pro. Um, item 15 was found to be locked with the passcode with the device was powered on. Using a list of passwords collected at the Crowley residence on January 17, 2015, the proper password was found and used to unlock this device. Okay, so maybe I can fuse with what Kamel's sister was telling me. It sounds like they were never able to get into Kamel's phone, but eventually they were able to get into um, Kamel's laptop, so I may have confused some of that. Um, let's see, so they were able to get in there, unlock it. Because the internal drive cannot be removed from this device, access data, FTK, imager, light was used to create a forensic image of the data. So they were able to get all the data from Kamel's forensic software from uh, Get Data's Forensic Explorer was used to examine the forensic images of items 6, 15, and 18. No information relating to the deaths of the Crowley was found. No information relating to the deaths of the Crowley family was found, period. FEX report. Many other devices were previewed using physical write blockers, which protect the devices being previewed from having any data written to or deleted from them. No information relating to the deaths of the Crowley family was discovered. Again, no information related to the Crowley family deaths was discovered in all these electronics. The items that were labeled or appeared to be related to the movie production were not previewed. Uh, con conclusion. After reviewing all pertinent pieces of evidence, and that's pretty important, let me go back to that last sentence. The items that were labeled or appeared to be related to movie production were not previewed. So they didn't even need to look at those, they just figured, you know, so any, they're not looking at any, they're not making any ties between the murders and all the stuff to Dave, what David was making, what he was doing. Even though in the Tom Lydon report, that's exactly what the, the police chief does he makes those ties when you're, when you're talking about this movie and you're taking taking you to a dark place and if you're just focused on that it's going to take you to this dark place but when we look at here the people who are actually doing the actual work who are looking at all of this stuff looking for anything motive all that stuff they didn't even bother with that because it had nothing to do with the case that's not what you do they're looking for evidence they're looking for real stuff they can't find it so their police chief just makes it up he just says that that's it's, it is tied to it, even though in here, they're, they don't even look at the document. They don't even look at that stuff because they know it's not going to be tied to it. A movie is not going to make you kill your family. It's ridiculous. Here's the conclusion. After reviewing all pertinent pieces of evidence, no information was found specifically related to the deaths of the Crowley family. Information was found that pointed to drug use between Mr. and Mrs. Crowley and Journal entries found on Mr. Crowley's phone indicated many sleep-deprived days for Mr. Crowley. So this conclusion here, if you look at what, what was written on Tony's um, website, that fake document, you know, they, they're really twisting things here. I mean, they're, they're really trying to twist all this, and they couldn't, even, they couldn't even get that right. They couldn't even get that right, and they had to pretty much create this fake document written from... Detective Shane Klokonis to Detective Tommy Booth. Big error right there. Big problem. You're in big trouble for that. Believe me, you are in trouble for that. Wait for the knock. Okay, um, evidence logged into the ECU was released and transported to the Apple Valley Police Department by this detective. That's the real document. That is what Detective Shane Klokonis really wrote. Not that fake thing that, um, was given to, to to Tony by Joe Tomato. So there it is, folks. Um, God bless you all. More to come, I promise. Much more to come on this. And uh, thank you to the Apple Valley Police Department for following through, for being professional, for um, making this very clear, and for providing an actual affidavit. That shows how serious they are really taking this fake document. It is not cool. I'm sure they do not appreciate people creating any type of fake documents. Not cool at all. I don't think that they would care if it's someone who thought David was innocent or guilty 
Um, we know that if it was written by Joe Tomato, if he's the one who really did this, uh, he was passing it around, definitely. But if he created this fake document, the police are not going to care just because you, you because you also believe he's guilty. They're not going to they're not going to pay that any mind. Um, so there you go. Keep knocking, but you can't come in. Um, until next time, thank you all for joining me here. God bless you all. And uh, make sure you check, check out the group, Justice for David Crowley and Family Facebook group. And check out everything else that we're doing. Um, trust me, more to come on this. Much more to come on this. God bless.